Okay, we are live. All right, so welcome everyone, welcome. I am so happy to be in this space, in this place today. And before we get started and I introduce my guests, I would like to go ahead and invite everyone into this sacred space. So take a nice, deep, centering breath. So welcome, peace, peace. So today, I'm so excited. I have with me uh, internationally renowned Reiki teacher, Reiki master teacher practitioner of the International House of Reiki, Franz Stein. Is it Steiner? Uh, he actually pronounced it Steiner, but it doesn't Franz matter. Franz Steiner. <laughs> Welcome, Franz. Welcome. And before we get started, I just want to say Franz is the author of The Inner Heart of Reiki, which is a very powerful, deep, deep book. He is also co-author of The Japanese Art of Reiki, as well as co-author of the Reiki Source book. So welcome, Franz. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for joining us here. I'm in Pennsylvania, USA, and you are in Holland. Yeah, it's, uh, it's actually, it, it looked to be quite rainy this morning, but now the sun is just popping through and it looks like a beautiful afternoon. Very good, very good. So generally what I like to do is I like to have conversations with people whom I consider to be movers and shakers spiritually and who are actively shining their light in the world and not only shining their light, but helping other people to shine their light as well. And one of my first questions that I, I love to ask because I, I think it just ties into everything. If you could share a little bit of your spiritual journey, what actually brought you up to Reiki? Oh, that's a good question. Um, well, I just moved back to Holland and I'm originally from the Netherlands. Okay. And so it's a really interesting contrast because when I moved from the Netherlands, I was a big drinker and party person and I wasn't into any of these kind of spiritual practices. Mm -hmm. And um, when I moved from Holland 20 years ago, I felt physically and spiritually, emotionally a bit lost. And we moved at that time, we moved to uh, Asia and we started in India. Mm -hmm. And um, I was in Ladakh, it's the north of India. Okay. And it was very beautiful. But uh, yes, as I felt physically not really that well, I suffered from a chronic back problems since I was about 16. They put me in a cast for a while, etc. So I was laying in bed there and uh, feeling sorry for myself. Uh -huh. and, and at one point I thought, well, this is crazy. I'm 30 years old and I have difficulty moving, getting out of bed and I don't really feel happy. I need to do something for myself. And I think if I look back now, that, that one statement in my own mind where I said I need to do something for myself really triggered a lot of other elements. Mm -hmm. uh, because often, you know, we think about I'm going to the doctor, they can heal me. But right. for me, I'm not sure where that ever came from, that, that statement within myself that I said I need to do something for myself. I need to make myself better. Right, right. And so I went out and stopped drinking. And then I actually met someone who um, was saying that uh, there was a local lady doing some healing sessions. And actually, uh, we were, as foreigners, just allowed to watch, went to this house. And, and then um, there was only maybe four or five foreigners sitting there, and the rest was all local people. Mm -hmm. And at the end of whatever she was doing, she said, oh, one foreigner needs to come forward. And the other people said, you go, France. And I said, well, okay. And then whatever she did, she touched me. And that was really the beginning of my journey. The next day, I wanted to buy books on spirituality. <laughs> but I'd never really thought about. And um, 
So yeah, that was really the beginning. I, I bought books in yoga, Tai Chi, Chi Kung, Buddhism, Hinduism, uh, Reiki, etc. And uh, yeah, for whatever kind of odd reason, I moved into Reiki and it really grabbed me and helped me. And I go like, wow, this is something. If I can do this, who was always very skeptical and not really inter interested in it, I would like to... Um, help other people because it right. really helped me. I haven't had back problems for about 19 years now. Mm -hmm. I stopped drinking, stopped smoking. I'm feeling so much happier. Right, right. So what is also interesting uh, actually is that uh, I, I moved back now. And so I haven't been in touch with a lot of old friends who I knew 20 years ago. Uh -huh. And now they go like, so what are you doing, Franz, with your life? I teach Reiki and meditation around the world. And they go, what? <laughs> <laughs> So, yes, it's an interesting journey. Okay, cool, cool. So can you tell us a little bit, you know, for our audience, can you tell us in a nutshell what is Reiki? For me, the system of Reiki is a spiritual practice what promotes well-being within yourself. Mm -hmm. And um, it consists of five very specific practices, what is meditation, precepts, hands-on healing, in uh, the deeper teachings, you work with symbols and mantras for yourself mm -hmm. and something what is called reiju uh, in Japanese, uh, modernly translated as attunement or initiation. Mm -hmm. And by practicing these five elements, we are laying bare more our own innate great bright light. And that is the great bright light of your true self or Buddha nature or whatever you want to call it. And from there, of course, from that discovery of your own innate light, it's mm -hmm. much easier, therefore, than to help other people to find their innate light. Okay. Okay. So, you know, a lot of people tend to think of Reiki as a new agey practice. Okay, and it's focusing on the chakras. Now you have the International House of Reiki, and I will share a little bit of my journey to Reiki and the stance, how I learned it initially, which is Western Reiki, which is through the lineage of uh, Hawaii uh, Takata. And um, I first learned Reiki by I would say I had a book of Diane Steins and she was probably the first to sort of like break the code and put the Reiki symbols in written format in books to the quote unquote uninitiative. And um, I remember reading her book through the prompting of a friend of mine. And I had a book for many years and uh, wasn't really didn't connect with it until I had someone continue to insist that I should learn Reiki. And I talked to my mother and she's like, yeah, you'd be good at that. So I remember reading the book and I remember being very, uh, what do you call it? Um, charged up, excited by the book. And it's like, okay, I want to learn Reiki. And, uh, but it, it was all from a very Western format. And within this, I remember reading the book, and then after I got through the entire book, I put the book down, and I remember saying to myself, and this is a, a second question I want to ask you, but my first part is, what are your thoughts on Western Reiki, and how is International House of Reiki different? But one of the things, you, you know what, I'll leave that part till later. So my first question is to you, what is the difference between Western Reiki and the approach of International House of Reiki. So we'll leave it there to make it less confusing. Yeah, I mean, um, I think for myself, I see it even more so now as kind of modern Reiki, a more traditional way, because even in Japan, there's a lot of people who teach Reiki from a very modern approach. Right, right. And um, so... Uh, when I first also learned the system of Reiki, it was very much from a modern approach. It was right. all about, you know, working on other people and you can do some hands-on healing on yourself. And, you know, often people would fall asleep and then they say, oh, I did some really great session on myself. And I go like, <laughs> they were, you were just really sleeping, right. you know. Um, and so what, one of the other interesting things when I lived in India, I, w I lived there for two years and, um, uh, for a year, I lived in a 
in a town called Darjeeling and there's a lot of healers around Darjeeling. Right. And one of the interesting things was that if I talked to these healers, they all had their own very regular and deep spiritual practice, like right. meditation, right. chanting, all of these things. Mm -hmm. And I go, well, that's interesting because we don't really have that within right. the system of Reiki. How, right. how do we just get the attunement and voila, we can do it. Right. And then there's but the focus on the chakras, basically. Yeah, right? focus yeah. On the chakras. And, you know, and, and so I started to wonder about that. Mm -hmm. And also I could see that these people in Darjeeling, when they were doing healing, okay. I mean, I remember uh, there was a Tibetan man and he just came out of a cave for nine months with his teacher. And mm -hmm. uh, we kind of got to know each other. And he said, so tell me more about Reiki. And I said, oh, you know, like, because at that time it was just hands on. Right. And on and, other people. Right. Yeah. And he said, oh, like this. And he puts his hand close to me. Unbelievable. The energy right, and the right. power that came from his hand was <laughs> unbelievable. And I go, um, yes, something <laughs> like that. And I thought, okay, why, why is it that mm -hmm. people like that has this mm -hmm. amazing depth and an amazing power, if you will, mm -hmm. um, and an amazing openness and and why don't we learn it in the system of Reiki? So then I start to investigate a lot of different uh, practices within the system of Reiki, right. uh, all different modern styles. And then we became very interested in how the system of Reiki worked in Japan. So we went to Japan at uh, first time in 2001 with Roman, uh, co-author of the uh, Reiki source book. Mm -hmm. And um, we we did some training there, and then I started to go further, did more training with um, Japanese people right. uh, and Japanese Reiki teachers. And that was good, but I felt there still was a lot missing. Right, right. And so, therefore, I started to look in where did Mikasui mm -hmm. got his teachings from? What would he have been practicing right. himself? You know, he right. didn't sit there and one day was having a cup of tea and go, oh, I'm going to start a system of Reiki. You know, he must have done practices prior to that he created the system of Reiki. And of, all, of course, we all know that story when he was sitting on a mountaintop on Mount right. Karama. And he was a Christian minister and a doctor. Which That's is it. What yeah. All these kind of things. <laughs> And so when he was sitting on his 21 day on a mountaintop is still a practice in Japan, what you can practice today, mm -hmm. very, very difficult. And you're only allowed to do it if you have done prior practices. Mm -hmm. So we can already see that Mikasui to feel that Reiki within himself, right. that he was doing some very, very straight spiritual practices. He was not just doing some, Attunement. No, he did a 21 day mm -hmm. spiritual practice where no eating and drinking, meditating right. many, many hours a day. And that brought for him that inner great bright light forward. And prior to that, he must have practiced other things because else you cannot sustain those 21 days. Right. So I was beginning to wonder what did he practice? What was he practicing himself? Mm -hmm. And if we look carefully at the system of Reiki, we can really see traces within the system of Reiki, which brings it back to more esoteric Japanese spiritual teachings. Right. And so I've been very fortunate to be able to train with Japanese priests now in okay. Japan itself mm -hmm. and who show me more of where all of this stuff kind of is coming from. Okay. And, okay. and that, I think, has been really exciting and uh, special for me. Um, and from that, I think we can uh, even hold that space for a client even more so, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I would ask you, Franz, now there's a difference between the system of Reiki, but what do you find for yourself and what you've written in your book, what would be the translation of Reiki? What is the word Reiki? Oh, well, in, in a way we can 
simply say Reiki, spiritual energy, mm -hmm. or sometimes it can also mean, I like it also, it can also mean ancestral energy. Right, ancestral but, energy. But, you know, like, I think if we say ancestral energy, people get a bit confused because right. then they think, oh, that's, that's my mom and my dad. Okay. But, okay. And, and that is something external of me. But actually, right. I cannot take my mom out of myself. No, you can't. Because then I'm dead. I cannot take my dad out of myself. Right. So, in, in fact, ancestral energy is the energy of everything. Right, right. You know, like, it's not just my mom and dad, but also the air they breathed, the sun, the water, and not just my mom and dad, but, you know, if we continue mm -hmm. looking at their parents and their parents and their parents, then right. that ancestral energy is everything. So right. we can right. say it's the energy of the universe. Okay. And this is what is said that Mikasui said, everything in the universe is Reiki. Right. So therefore we can say the universe is Reiki, Reiki is the universe. It's just a different word. Right. right. But it, it's pointing towards the same core. And so therefore for me, when we practice the system of Reiki, it's about on a very deep level over time. And that doesn't happen in a two-day class or a month class, but this is a lifetime practice that right. I am the universe, the universe is me. Right. Right. Uh, okay, so uh, another thing I'd like to bring up. So when you have Western Reiki, there is a focus on not only doing Reiki on other people, but focusing on the chakra energy mm -hmm. system, you know, the root, the, the sacral chakra, the solar plexus, the heart, the throat, the third eye, the crown. Yeah. What, what does... Now, you don't really want to call it Japanese Reiki or you call it traditional Reiki? Well, you know, for me, when, we, when we look at uh, the system of Reiki when it was practiced in Mikasui's time, mm -hmm. it was, was really... Around what years? Was uh, late 1800, beginning 1900. Okay. And so it was very much about focusing on one particular center, what is uh, just below your navel, and okay. it's called the Hara, Hara. or the Tandan. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's really your center. I mean, if I would stand up, you would see that that point is the center of my body. Right. And there's even sentences in Japan where, for example, they say, oh, you're not speaking from your hara. doesn't mean you're not speaking from your belly, but it means you're not speaking in a centered way. You're, you're speaking all over the place. Right. Okay. So uh, when we look at, for example, meditations within the system of Reiki, Joshin Kokyoho, mm -hmm. or the first symbol and mantra mm -hmm. we can really see links to this particular energy center the hara or the tandan okay and when the system of reiki came to the west uh, particularly after mrs takara died more and more other concepts were brought in oh okay, um, okay. like uh chakra work for example or crystals or all uh -huh. sorts of other things uh -huh. and it, it's neither good nor bad i mean of course there's always an evolution um but for me uh personally i really like to focus on what what was mikasui practicing and how was he doing that etc mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay so basically what you're saying here is that uh miss takata she didn't teach Reiki from a perspective of the chakras, and that was. Um, it is said that that probably not. I mean, it's still, of course, very difficult to to set that in stone because, mm -hmm. I mean, this is the same thing we can see in yoga, for example, or even in Tai Chi or Qigong. Uh, a very good teacher teaches traditionally uh, right. according to a person's understanding. Mm -hmm. and uh, maybe Mrs. Takata had a student who was really into the chakras and she would have said, oh, you know, working with this particular exercise, we can see that it works on the hara or the tandan, but mm -hmm. we might also just call that the sacral chakra, for example. Right, so, you know, right. Mm -hmm. um, in her diary herself, she has mm -hmm. a really beautiful statement in her diary in I think it's 1937 mm -hmm. where she writes down that Reiki comes from the bottom of your stomach oh, okay. and you know and it's, yeah. and it's through meditation that we can really bring that forth 
and so you know like uh i th- i think really a lot of things have changed uh, after mr takada died mm-hmm. and i think of prior uh, hayashi uh many researchers now in japan also know that hayashi changed a lot of mikasui's teachings okay again it's neither good nor bad but mm-hmm. for me I, i really really like to uh focus on the founder himself right you know? right what was his idea i'm not that interested in hayashi's idea or mrs right. takada's idea I, right. i want to know what is his idea right and actually where where did he take it from because if i can find where he took it from right and we can see traces for example in japanese esoteric teachings then we can also understand what the origins were and therefore we can go much uh much more so to the core of the teachings right and so what i'm understanding is and even from reading your book is that you know i i've had people say to me that reiki has nothing to do with buddhism mm. whatsoever yeah <laughs> um and so to that you i suppose through your un- understanding and research when it makes sense that in japan in the late 1800s and even the early part of the 20th century even though shintoism was i believe the state religion but many people were buddhists as well yeah. as shinto so from your training and background it makes absolute sense that these energetic practices or even just the reiki itself would have stemmed out of his buddhist practice or esoteric buddhism yeah i definitely believe i mean for example we can look at uh uh at around that time of mikasui particularly the healers at that time mm-hmm. they were very much into something what was called shugendo shugendo and shugendo was a form and it was kind of very uh mixed so it was buddhism shintoism taoism folk belief shamanic practices and at that time it was start to get banned because it became too big for the okay. government and okay. there was other political issues in japan going on um but at that time if you were sick you would go to a buddhist or shinto priest or shugendo priest and it's not like here in 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 more modern countries where we say we eat a christian or we this or we that right. a lot of things in japan are very interconnected right already you know long before mikasui there was a big movement of taoism coming into japan and that was adopted by buddhism and shintoism and all that started to blend and have its own interesting flowering happening right right um but you know like i i think when we look for example at the first symbol in reiki 2 i was um uh, 2016 i was on a mountain top a uh, special mountain top in japan mm-hmm. where has been practiced spirituality for 1300 years okay it's been not polluted by anything you cannot really go on it as a tourist okay. uh, there is no there's a couple of little temples and you can only stay there if you uh, are a member of these temples and okay. so it's it's quite strict you know you, there's not a, a snack bar <laughs> where you can go <laughs> and eat something Now, you know is so that mount kurama Uh, no this is mount omine but there's lots of these mountains okay. in, in okay. japan mm-hmm. and um so i was doing i was there for uh, five days and doing some very interesting practices mm-hmm. and on one day i saw on this pillar a symbol what is very similar to the first symbol in the system of reiki so i went to the head priest on his mountain and i said oh can i ask you something uh, and i said i would draw something and i'd like to hear your feedback Mm. And as soon as I start to draw it he says oh this means that mm-hmm. he said it's a normal thing we used here mm-hmm. as an internal practice for your own internal to find your own inner what he calls kami right. so your own inner kami what means like your own inner kami is often translated as god but uh-huh. more your inner god you know your inner light So that would kind of be like your spark of divinity, your flame of the yeah. divine that is Absolutely. Right, your in right. divine being. 
Right. And for me, therefore, we can also say the word Reiki mm -hmm. means your inner divine being. Right, right. Or your the, true self. Or your true self. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so when we lay that bare, of course, that's going to have a very different effect on mm -hmm. your clients, but not only on your clients, also on your community. Right, right. Starting and with yourself first. Starting with yourself. You know, like what is really interesting, I just moved uh, here to Holland. Mm -hmm. And um, so in the first week, I'm exploring new parts of the town I'm living in. Mm -hmm. And I come across this little cafe. Okay. And I walk into this cafe and it's very busy. And the staff is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. the, the lady looks me in the eyes and said, oh, hi, welcome. You're new here. We haven't seen you here before. Um, and I'm going, oh, yeah. And so after about an hour sitting in this cafe, I go out and I felt really good. <laughs> so I thought, I'm going to go back to this cafe because the staff was just, you know, really interactive, really open, really happy. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I go back a couple of times. And um, the third time I speak to this lady and it turns out she's the co-owner and she says, I said, you know, I've been observing for the last three times, you guys, said, you guys are amazing. Mm -hmm. I said, the way you treat your clients, the way you treat each other is like really, really open. And I said, I bet this is why you're so busy. And she goes, you know, we train our staff and ourselves to serve people without any anger, without any worry, and being really <laughs> open and compassionate. And they go, have you heard of the system of Reiki? And she goes, I've heard of it, but I don't know anything about it. Okay. And, and you know, for me, this is just, you know, for me, this is the system of Reiki, you know? Yes, yes. And it's not that people might say, oh, she's not practicing the system of Reiki. No, but she was the system of Reiki. She is the system of Reiki because she embodied his kindness and compassion. Right. And, and that is it really what it is about. You know, it's, it's not about necessarily doing hands-on right, healing. Right, right. And also hands-on healing is very limiting. Yes. Because we cannot always do hands-on healing on people. And since then, I've only been living here for four weeks. Since then, I've been a couple of times to this cafe. Actually, I was there this morning. Okay. Um, and and um, I, I spoke to someone else who randomly sitting next to me. And, and this other lady said, wow, I feel so at peace here in this cafe. And, you know, we, we got to chat. And so for me, this is really if we can establish that in our local community, mm -hmm. if we can establish that in our family, and then that goes so much further than just hands on here. Mm -hmm. And right. for me, that is really what the system of Reiki is about, you know, finding that inner divine light, just right. as in Buddhism, just as in Christianity or whatever belief system, right. and from that light emanates more and more and more. And then whoever, animals, plants, buildings, people, things can be in that light and right. therefore the world will be a different place. Right, right. Yes, the, that great bright light that is within. And when yeah. you were telling me what the woman said about how they trained, uh, would you mind if I read a little bit from your chapter three? No, no, go ahead. Precepts. So the precepts, you would say like the precepts is probably the major pillar foundation of Reiki. And I'll just share, this is a translation of the Usui Memorial Stone, a translation found in Hiroshi Doi's manual. And uh, it's just for today. Do not be angry. Do not worry. Be thankful. Do what you are meant to do. Be kind to others. Yeah. And that's basically the foundation of, of, of this wonderful system of Reiki. So I want to, you know, there's this big debate that I, I've heard about people, you know, receiving Reiju in person or receiving Reiju at a quote unquote distance. And 
I'd like to share my personal perspective of it, which was my very first time, and I felt I encountered Reiki at this time. And this is before I came across any teacher. This was simply through Diane Stein's book. And as I was saying earlier, I read the book, and after I read the book, I was so charged up and just so excited and ready to move forward. I took a moment at that time, just spontaneously, and I said, uh, universe, uh, I am open. I don't know if I said mother, father, God, or whatever. I just said universe, a great spirit. I am open to whatever healing that you have for me. And I just, I was laying on my bed reading, and I remember laying the book down, and I sort of stretched out. I was stretching, and just when I did that, I literally felt and it was like I saw in my mind's eye, I felt this light come right in through my left hand, go right down my body and right out through my feet. And it kind of startled me. But this is, this, is what I, this is what I had experienced, I felt. And I had noticed, and this was not my intention, I'm just like, okay, universe, I'm ready. Take me, guide yeah. me, show me. And I felt this energy go through me, and I was just like, whoa. So then I started going about my day. And one of the things I noticed was prior to that happening, uh, let's see, that was sometime in maybe June, sometime in April or May of 2007. Well, March of 2006, I was diagnosed with a blood clot in my left leg. And um, I was on Coumadin, a blood thinner for three months. This was a very stressful time of, you know, time in my life, maybe three or six months I was on the blood thinners. And then from then on, I was constantly having issues with my circulation. And I remember at that point in the spring of 2007, I was walking every, every day because my legs hurt every day and I was just mm. walking to trying to get it to stop. And I remember after I had that experience, I no longer had that leg pain, which is just this vast heaviness. So I would tell people, you know, that was my first Reiki experience yes. on my own, untouched. And people would say, no, it's impossible. You can't experience Reiki unless another person gives it to you. And you certainly can't uh, have a Reiki. I felt it was my beginning of being attuned to or whatever to Reiki. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, like for me, it's really simple. And, and therefore, we have to look at the precepts. Okay. You know? And the precepts says, do not anger, do not worry, be grateful, be true to your way and your being and show compassion to yourself and others. Mm -hmm. No one has to give that to us. Right, right. Right? right. We have to give that to ourselves. Right. And it's, it's our birthright. These precepts are our birthright. And therefore, for me... Reiki, ancestral energy, is also not something what someone gives to us. We are ancestral energy. We are spiritual energy. Some people say, oh, um, a Reiki teacher gives you energy, uh, gives you Reiki. And then often, you know, like they might say, oh, if you haven't received the attunement, you cannot practice Reiki. And then I ask them, what do you mean is Reiki? And they might say universal energy. So I said, okay, really what you're saying Without the attunement, you cannot practice Reiki. Without the attunement, you cannot practice universal energy. You know what I mean? You're dead. <laughs> but even if you're dead, you're still universal energy. Right, so, right. you know, it's, it's, I think it's a myth what has been created around the system of Reiki, what is un very unfortunately. And I think also it is very much that by saying that, we look very much outside of ourselves. That, right. oh, that Reiki is hanging somewhere, somewhere. <laughs> and this teacher has it right. somehow. And then he magically performs his ritual and boom, now you have it. Right. And we also all know that no anger, no worry, no fear, being true to your way and your being, being grateful and being compassionate is not that easy. <laughs> so also, no, it's also, it's not just one achievement or initiation or rage you, it's, it's the rest of our life. Yes, yes. If it was that easy that suddenly <laughs> we all have no more anger and no more worry and we're all <laughs> compassionate, then I'm going to stand out here in the city and I do it on everybody and suddenly within no time, Holland will be the happiest country in the world. But we right. all know 
It doesn't work that way. It's not a magic thing. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, because we are all Reiki, mm -hmm. and because you set your intent, I want to heal myself. And it was not a, a weak intent. You know, if we set the, the intent, I want a cup of tea, and we don't take any action, <laughs> right. a cup of tea, then it's a very weak intent. But if I said, I want a cup of tea, and it doesn't matter if I have to make it here or I have to walk to the other side of town or I have to go to the other world, other side of the world to get it, then that intention is really strong. So if I, if I have a really strong intention, I want to heal myself, then you open yourself already up. You are allowing to have that inner great bright light, mm -hmm. your inner divine being, your Reiki to already start to emanate from your body. Right. Of course, due to habits, we start to cover it really quickly up again. Mm -hmm. But then if we start to practice the meditations, the hands on healing, the precepts, working with the symbols and mantras and more, read you, for example, over that and we start to really get into it, then more and more that inner light, that true self, that inner divine spark will shine outwards without... Mm -hmm covering it up we soften these habitual patterns right 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 so with in your studies that you found going back to the more traditional source would you say that breath work that working with proper breathing is also a part of traditional reiki absolutely yeah absolutely okay. yeah sitting in meditation practice even again uh, Mrs. Takara told this in a diary uh, mm -hmm. that, you know, you have to meditate to go within and to let that Reiki come out, you know, and, and we have to quiet our mind. You know, we all now know really is that energy follows the mind. Right. And this, is, this is why the precepts, and this is why I love the precepts, are all about the mind, the mind of no anger, the mind of no worry, the mind of being grateful, the mind of being true to your own way and being, and a mind of compassion. So if I quieten and work with the mind and really feel all of that within my mind, then of course my energy also will become calmer and more relaxed and more compassionate right. and more loving. And therefore, that will have an effect on my own well-being and on the well-being of the people I'm with or the people I do a treatment with. Right. And, you know, you, you brought up again being true to mm. yourself and being true to your work. That, yeah. That's not something that's very popular <laughs> in modern society. It's Unfortunately more, not. Do your job, do what is right, what is right, what is right. And being true to yourself is something that's very right. And I think once you get into that space, what do you think? It's easier to deal with the world. Yeah. yeah. Because often, you know, we, we find it very difficult to be true to ourselves most of the time. And we can see this in, in, a, in young kids, you know, young kids are still being very much true to their, true their self and way in a being. And then society comes along. No, you have to behave like this. Right. Uh, <laughs> domestication. Uh, <laughs> domestication. I'm just reading, uh, uh, just prior to your call, I was just uh -huh. reading this book and it's, it's really funny and you have to have a certain sense of humor and it's called uh -huh. Help. <laughs> okay. And it's by Simon Amstel. Uh-huh. Simon Emsel is a British comedian. I won't read anything out of it, <laughs> particularly the chapter I was reading now. Okay. But it was about being, being free, you know, and he said, he, he, just one sentence, we're all stuck in this prison of appropriate behavior. And, and you know, like we, we lose that ability to be true to our way in our being. Right. And, you know, therefore we become very uptight, very worried, very angry, very sad very like this and yes. therefore that energy cannot flow through you right so right. therefore the more we feel that freedom again within ourselves the more that energy starts to flow through you the easier it is to help other people help yourself yeah right so tell me about the international house of reiki and while you do that i'm going to bring up let's see i think you have a blog i'm going to share screen and show your website so people can find you and 
All right, can you see that? How ah, it? yes, that's it. So there we go. So this is the International House of Reiki. Yeah. And uh, you have, I mean, your, your articles there are very in-depth and amazing and very contemplative. Uh, contemplative. So can you give a little background history on the International House of Reiki and your work that you do through that? Well, uh, Brahman and I, when we uh, first learned the system of Reiki, and then we had a Reiki center in India in Darjeeling mm -hmm. for a year. And when we came to Australia, uh, we said, okay, let's, let's start up a Reiki center and it became the International House of Reiki and we always were very focused on showing people and giving people mm, the best we could offer so we would really get out of the way so therefore we created a really extensive website we wrote books uh, we we do webinars we do um, retreats we do hands-on healing sessions we do reiki one two and three classes so we we do a lot and i think this is you know when you step into that role of being a teacher or a facilitator then i think it's really important that you know you you do the best you can uh, and not leave things half half and so that's always been our um a motto, you know, do the best we can. And as a team, we've been working really well. So yeah, hopefully um, that comes through. So yeah, we, as you can see, we Australia, United Kingdom, North America, Europe, we work in all those places. We teach in all those places and uh, we've got lots of resources. And even on the website, we have something in the background, what is called a key campus. Right, right. And that is for people who um, have done our classes and there is forums, there are interactive things to do. So it's, uh, it's really uh, a big portion of the International House of Reiki. Right. And uh, you have meditations and uh, different things that you can download. Your book, uh, yeah. The Inner Heart of Reiki, can be purchased yeah. through there as well. That's a really good price. Is this the actual physical book? Okay. It's, it's the physical. No, you just because uh, it just gives you a link to oh. some Amazon. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't have my glasses on. I see that. We used to sell them uh, from our own uh, place, but uh, as now I'm in a moving transition, it's a bit hard to pack them and log them along. Right, so, yes. Uh, easiest way is to, uh, yeah, you know, I, like, I, I like packing in things, don't get me right. wrong, but I'd rather teach. So, right. you know, you have, to, you have to make priority of the things you like to do as a teacher, I think. Right. So, right, my first book was The Japanese Art of Reiki. And uh, as I was mentioning to Franz earlier, I came across the International House of Reiki. I began my Reiki training uh, 10 years ago through Western Reiki, and which is fine and good. But, you know, it was a heavy emphasis on hands-on healing. And uh, I really, somewhere inside of me, and it wasn't intentionally, I immediately viewed Reiki as a spiritual path. But yeah. there really wasn't anything outside of myself, you know, kind of to try to help along the way to help formulate it into a spiritual path, only an internal. And I remember I mentioned to Franz that I was working uh, at a particular place and uh, there was one of the bosses there who just had a really difficult energy to deal with. Not just me, most everyone who worked there. And I remember reacting to this person and calling them a certain name underneath my breath. And I remember the moment it came out of my mouth, I felt very ashamed. The, not that the person heard me. They didn't hear me. I'm sure they felt the energy. They didn't hear me. But I immediately was like, oh, wait a minute. How can I be a Reiki person and yet, you know, lack compassion in this moment? And it was from there I started trying to find, is there anyone out there that teaches Reiki 
uh, more along the lines of a spiritual path rather than just a modality you can do in other people and quote unquote get paid for. And that's how I came across the Japanese art of Reiki. And then eventually I purchased the Reiki source book. Uh, I, I also found uh, someone who was trained through Hiroshi Doi's student. Uh, let's see, can't remember their name offhand, but Thunder Th Threshold Reiki. I forget the person who did Threshold Reiki, but um, someone who trained along with him was my Reiki teacher. So through G G Gendai Reiki, I think, yes. yeah. but, uh, through Hiroshi Doi. So I trained there. And but all of my further studies has been through purchasing of Franz's book through International House of Reiki. And you have a new book that is coming out in June. Can you tell us a little bit? Yeah, about that book? it's called Reiki Insights, and it's uh, really based on the insights I had about the system of Reiki. Uh, but also from my travels to Japan and studying with these Japanese uh, priests. You can already pre-order it. Mm -hmm. Comes out in June 29. Oh, there you go. Um, so I'm really excited about it. Yes. Yeah. And uh, each chapter is kind of a short chapter. What helps you to uh, kind of meditate upon. Oh, okay. So that you can actually reflect upon it and say, oh, okay, this is what it is like, etc., etc. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to have that published in, uh, in June. Mm. Can, can you explain to us this image? I see this uh, lotus. Yeah, I took that uh, picture in a temple, uh, a Japanese uh, temple, and I really liked it. And um, for me, it's a lotus flower. And uh, it's the symbol itself is called the A. Ah. And okay. for me, the A ah, traditionally, uh, one of the elements of the system of Reiki uh -huh. within Reiki tree is very much linked to this A. Ah. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the white circle really stands also for your own inner brightness. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, for me, that really represents something. I really felt drawn to it. And uh, so I, I, I like that idea for the cover and I put it forward to the publisher and I said, yeah, we like it too. So we use it. So, yeah. Okay. And you will be touring the United States soon. You have classes coming up. Yeah, I've got classes in um, this February in uh, Los Angeles, a Shimpanen Reiki 3 class and a Reiki Play Day. Uh, I've got a Reiki 1 and 2 class and a Reiki Play Day in Seattle in February. And then the rest of these years, I will also be teaching in New York and Cincinnati and uh, all right, very cool. Well, all sorts of different places. So in, in many different places in the, the U.S. In the U.S. as well as in the U.K. you have classes. In the U.K. I'll, yeah, I've been teaching in the U.K. a few times. Uh, I'm teaching in Germany the next weekend coming up. Okay, all right. So, yeah, so it's been very exciting. Yeah, very cool. So this has been really great, Franz. I thank you so much for being here. And again, I would really encourage people who really want a no-nonsense approach to Reiki, one where the, um, what do you call it? The focus is taken less off of working on others, but more of working on oneself. There are, wow, there are 32 Reiki, um, sorry, 32 chapters in here. And yeah. it, it's just, it's, it's a phenomenal book. The inner, inner heart of the system of Reiki, chapter one, Reiki is true self. Usui Reiki Ryoho, chapter two, the precepts. Uh, chapter four, the Hara Dantian. Uh, chapter five, mind, body, energy. Chapter six, meditate to rediscover your true self. And just on and on. This is really, I can't even say it. It's just, it's really deep. And I really encourage people. You know, when people ask me if there's one book on Reiki that you would recommend, uh, there, there are two because my late teacher, one of my late teachers, Don 
D D Don Beckett wrote Reiki, The True Story. And I really appreciate him. And I always mention his book. And if someone really wants a Reiki that's really focused on the spiritual path and related to the Dharma, always take um, the inner heart of Reiki. And one of my teachers, uh, my initial Reiki master teacher who I apprenticed with was uh, Paul and Michal Johnson. I don't know if you... Oh, remember. yeah, yeah. Yep. Yes, yes. Uh, when I was looking for my Reiki master teacher initially 10, 10 years ago, I wanted someone who really had Reiki at their heart in his service. And I met Paula when um, I went to my doctor's office right before my insurance was about to expire. I was at my doctor's office and I was about, let's say I was just arriving or I was just about to leave. And I see this little tiny lady just flutter in and she mentioned to someone, yeah, I was over at the hospital today and I did Reiki on two people and blah, blah, and I was like, hospital, Reiki? And I turned <laughs> around and I see this little tiny glowing woman. And I said, I would love to learn Reiki with you. You know, I was looking for Reiki tree, three training. And she's like, oh, I have a class starting in December and you can come along. And so I apprenticed with uh, Paula for a couple of years. And then I found your book. Let's see, this book. <laughs> the Japanese art of Reiki, because at that time she was teaching Reiki from a more Western point of view. And I would bring the book on the table with the Reiki source book to show the class. And even though it wasn't Western Reiki, what she was teaching, you know, I, I was trying to encourage her, check this out, check this out. This goes even deeper. So eventually she did come and study with you. Mm, she did, yes. And so uh, I mentioned her and Don Beckett because they both since passed, and passed on, transitioned on, and I'm dedicating this interview conversation to them and to their memory and their great bright light that they shine. So I thank you, Franz, for being part of this. And are there any last words you'd like to, like to leave our audience with um yeah i look again i would come back to the precepts you know try as much as possible on a daily basis to really embody those precepts in all you do not just in a little meditation or hands on healing but everything we do from making breakfast to working with your co-workers to be with your partner to sitting reading a book in the evening do not anger do not worry be grateful be true to your way and your being and show compassion to yourself and others Right, just for today, just for today. So I thank you, Franz. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this call to an end. And once I do, please hang on the line for just a few moments, okay? Okay, no So problem. I'd like to invite everybody to take a nice, deep, centering breath as we get ready to release this sacred circle. And I invite everyone to uh, give a moment of silence for our ancestors and for all those who have transitioned before us. I wish you peace and great bliss. And I encourage you to please thumbs up this video. Please share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Thank you. And I'm going to end the recording.